Hello, welcome back to the Spider's Web. And in this video, we've got a load of little rats to do. <laughs> yes, rat swarm is what we have here. There's loads of rats and a single skull. You might be able to see the in each swarm. So, we're going to get this done. What do we do? Well, let us use a little bit of Rhinox hide. Um, we don't really need to set up uh, our palette for this because there's not much of it to do. We may use the um, CD palette, but it's going to get a lot of water on the brush and just go over the whole of the mini with a damp brush and lots of patience well not patience now um, so got a damp brush and some paint on the brush we're eat <laughs> so and the best thing about this we're using rhinoxide and this is the colour that I use for my bases at the moment anyway so I don't need to be thinking about finishing the bases off because I already have done them. So we'll just do this all over um, on each of the different um, bases and these I'm classing these as sort of like wild rats. Um, and usually you're fine with wild rats the majority of them are brown so I'm not going to be faffing around doing different colours and trying to be fancy on these they're just going to be brown rats although saying that no I won't so just every now and again just keep dipping our brush into the water Shaking it off or wiping it a little bit off and just getting on with colouring in this. And it's a fairly flat mini as you can see there's nothing um, nothing really stand out on it so all we're just going to do is dry brush over the top in a paler colour um, and that way we just pick out all the details of the rats and we don't need to worry about anything else really. That's going to be the bit that's going to take a little bit of time um, for trying to get detail work right because we've got to do a, a little bit of colour mixing for that um, because I don't want it to be like um, a too pale a colour. I want it to be slightly, slightly darker than that. Um, I thought, why have I just gone into there when I want to clean the brush? Scrape the paint off, give the brush a rinse again, give it a shake, and back into the paint. The reason I'm doing that is basically because it's just um, easier than just wasting time on a palette. I might as well just do this. Um, there's nothing on that much in regards to this for keeping the paint thin as long as it goes on thin and spreads around um, that's the important thing and with a damp brush you'll get that um, I wouldn't do this for trying to do any proper minis um, so for picking up details that kind of thing but if you can get away with it sometimes you might as well he says putting it on the um, palette and then wasting some of it afterwards. Just make sure it's all brushed out. So, that's that. The thing is now, it's still not dried fully yet. So we're going to need to wait a little bit for this to dry fully. Um, but 
and tear this time just to make sure that we haven't missed anything and we haven't so I think this is a, more of a case of just walking away for a short time and then coming back a bit later to continue so I think that is what we'll actually do just until all three have dried um, it won't be too long so we'll join me right after this transition right so it's all dried now and we can carry on so next job we want something, something a little bit lighter than the brown that we've just used not too much though so we'll get some of the Rhinox hide that we used already and pop that on our little palette here da -da -da. there we go and what other colour should we mix into it to make it a little bit different Nurgling Green just for a change Nurgling Green hopefully it gives an interesting colour scheme I don't want a straight creamy brownie colour um, I'm looking for something a little more distinct a little more interesting um, I'm not going to do that bit let's have a spot of Soltec Green in there as well just to change it a little bit more um, there we go. Like a brownie grey colour. That's quite nice, actually. And we'll keep it with that. Let's see if it's enough of a difference for. The rats, not really. So let's add some screaming skull into the proceedings um, to brighten it up a little bit now. That hopefully will now do the trick. So I'll do that, wipe some off, and then. Go over all the rats. It gives them a slightly different colour to the rest of the base, but not enough of a difference. Add some more of this. We're looking, as I say, for a paler colour than the brown that we put on earlier but not too pale that it stands out too much this and tap this time I think we have it that will do see the difference there yes <laughs> that's the kind of thing we're looking for subtle but noticeable there we go and obviously we will be coming back to these um, later on just so we can do the skull that's there and that's that go over all of the just the rats um, obviously we're going over the skull as well on the top we don't want to go over too much because we want something a little different at the base so if we just go around and make sure that the outside of the rats are done as well the inside it doesn't matter too much about um, but let's just make sure that we make them stand out just that little bit more and I've got that itchy nose again. 
it comes every time I try to do something. <laughs> oh dear lord. Right, so there we are. Just making, as I say, sure that all the outside areas of the rats have some light to them. The inside, the where they're meeting up with others, doesn't make any difference as such because, let's face it, it's going to be, um, what do we call it? They're going to be uh, two, um, two shaded anyway. Right, so let's add a little bit more of this Screaming Skull into the mix. There we are. And this one is just going to be lightly brushed over just to pick out some extra detail along the top edges and that's it for the rats as I said the next job with these is the skull and that is going to be done next and what we need for that is the screaming skull surprisingly enough not much on it and we just make sure that using the longer bristles on this angled brush go over and just touch the the skull areas. I'm gonna say the longer area, longer bristles I mean this part, not that part. And there we are. I'm not really too fussed about um the way the light hits it because as long as we can see that it's a skull I'm pushing here with the shorter parts because they've got those parts have um, paint on where the longer bits haven't uh, we can if we wanted to just gently brush over some of the ones around it you don't have to if you don't want to but it makes it a little e a little not easier but gives it that little extra something not doing it on all of them just that one will do just to get as much paint off the brush as i can and there we are that's it the three rat swarms are done one thing I forgot about was in one of the um, one of the brown boxes, um, you know, the brown pizza boxes that these minis come in. Uh, I found another um, thing of uh, bats yesterday uh, after I'd finished the video, so I just did that in the exact same way. So we have three, four, is it three or four? I can't remember. Those three um, bats. Um, Bat, flock of bats, the three uh, swarm of rats. So uh, there we are, uh, they've all been done. So that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let's move that out of the way and that out of the way and pick these up together so you can have a look. And you can see that the rats now stand out quite well, as do the skulls. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Until next time, when we have more Vampire Hunters, take care, God bless, and bye for now.